five minutes and you're gonna take your board game videos to a whole new level. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Wolfpack. And speaking of Wolfpack, this video is just for you, the content creator who is ready to step up their game in filmmaking and adding a whole new perspective in your videos. So today I'm gonna to teach you four new angles, hopefully in less than five minutes and quickly. Also, please excuse the mess, I'm trying to learn too many bones here. But in the midst of that, I wanted to also step in and teach you some new things I've been experimenting with that is of course going right back to you. Okay, let's talk about angle number one. This one is one I use most often. I actually learned this from Peter McKinnon. He used to do these quite often with his like backpack videos, like what's in my backpack videos or like gear videos. And this is what I would like to call the half body shot. I use this super, super often. Okay, with every angle that we talk about in today's video, it can be done with one tripod and one camera. So for this first angle, what you wanna do is height adjust it so that way the top of the frame is going to be right beneath your chin. And you also, let's go ahead and look at the camera settings too. You also notice that I set my f-stop really low because I really want the background to be as blurry as possible. And this is also being shot at 24 frames per second, which is why my shutter speed is at one over 50. I have a ton of videos explaining all these camera settings, but just as a general principle, set your f-stop to as low as possible. And then from there, we're going to punch out from here so I can show you what goes on behind the scenes when filming this type of angle. Now the whole purpose of this particular angle is to complement what you're talking about in the A-roll. So let's say in your Too Many Bones video, you're talking about some of the loot cards. So instead of just showing you know, your A-roll shot, you can overlay it with some B-roll and it's going to punch in, it looks super dreamy because you can see me in the background, I'm not the focus. What the focus is on is the loot card right here and I'm gonna turn it and flip it around just like that and it looks so dreamy. It looks interesting, there's a whole depth perspective and the focus is on the component that you're isolating and talking about. I love this shot and I use it all the time and it's even better to not do this on slow motion, you wanna do this in real time. That way it's more relatable to the audience. So you can do this with anything. I'll go ahead and show some B-roll of other footage that I've done this with as well. It looks awesome, it's one of my favorite angles to play with. It shows size relativity to the, like, your hands into the component. Really helpful when you're showing miniatures. And on top of that, it's not flat, so it's not the same top-down angle that a lot of us are used to from just showing it on top of the table. Angle number two is the over-the-shoulder shot. I've talked about this one in previous videos, but this one's probably the most awkward to film because you kind of have to like crouch down, especially if you're tall, if you, especially if you don't have like a tripod that can reach that height. So for tall people, I'm sorry, but it's still really cool and I highly, highly encourage you to try out this shot. For this one, the reason why an over-the-shoulder is really cool is because it shows more of a point of view to what you're doing. So for instance, let's say I'm rolling dice. For this one, you wanna have it right over your shoulder and you actually want your shoulder in the shot because it shows some of that foreground blur. And this makes it look way more cinematic. You'll see a ton of movies do this and your focus can be on whatever you're talking about in frame. So let's say you're filming a playthrough and you're about to roll some attack dice and you're attacking some monsters here. So I'm gonna roll this and then you'll see it looks so much more cooler when you have this angle in perspective. But let's say you wanna rave about some of the components and how cool they are. You can talk about this and show them in the shot as if someone is actually looking over your shoulder to see how cool the components that you're talking about are. For this one though, I would highly recommend either locking focus or really paying attention to your autofocus because since you're using your hands a lot in this shot, your camera's gonna be hunting around and trying to find out where the focus is because you're moving your components around a lot. So that's gonna cause a lot of hunting and it might be very distracting for the viewer. So if you don't wanna pay attention to it, just lock your focus and know where your focus is. Be especially careful with this technique if you are talking about cards or showing cards because you're gonna be fidgeting a lot with your hands and this is gonna cause the autofocus to screw up a lot. Now number three, we'll go ahead and call this the 45 because the camera is positioned at a 45 degree angle to you. And this one works really well if you have window light. I'm like very fortunate enough to have some huge windows right here. So I use that to my advantage with no artificial lighting at all. I did try this with my Merchants Co video and it wasn't done too well because there's a huge glare. And the reason for that is because I put my table right in front of the window. So instead of positioning your table right underneath the window where there's a huge glare, what you can do instead is what I'm doing, which is moving your table further away from the window and even lateral to it, if that's like the best term for it, because what's happening is that the window light is harshest here and it creates a sort of really beautiful, lively, inviting gradient across the table. So over here is a darker area. Here is the most brightest part, the highlights are, and right here is probably the best part 
of your frame. I also like to think about my audience and make it more suitable for them. So the text and everything is going to be positioned uh, right side up for them. And I'm playing everything backwards. So if I were to move my chips around, it'd be played backwards. And if I were to position, for instance, another chip over here, it'd be placed backwards to me, but forwards for you. The 45 is not a good angle if you want to isolate very specific components because it's going to be hard to see and read little bits of text on these chips. But if you want to talk about general positioning or just general strategies, or maybe they don't really need to necessarily see and understand exactly what's going on, but just understand the general flow of the game, then this is a great angle for that. Okay, I love this angle so, so much. It might be my favorite angle out of the four today. But this one, I started this one with my top five board games to buy at Target video. And it looks way better when it's dramatic with like a dark backdrop behind you, but you can do this for anything. The only problem is that you do need a lens that goes to pretty low f-stop, mine goes to f2. And it's even better if you can position your camera as far away as possible. So you have like a long lens, anything above 50 millimeters would be great for this. Right now I'm using a 28 to 70 millimeter lens and um, it can also go down to 2.0. Now with this, you're going to set a center autofocus target because you're gonna be focusing in on yet another component. This angle is perfect for slow motion and it's pretty much opposite to the other over the shoulder shot. So the other one was an over the shoulder, but from a top down angle, this one is going from low up and it is fantastic for filming shots just like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit record so I can show you. And I like to be really dramatic about this and kind of just go into frame, reveal that component. It comes into focus. Ooh, just look at how good that looks. I should probably do this more often for like the natural daylight shots, but I love this look because it's a really great point of interest as I'm unveiling a specific component and I'm kind of just moving backwards to the frame, maybe moving a little bit forwards. I can kind of flip this over, not that you wanna see the backside, but in case there are double-sided components, you can use it for that as well. Okay, now my question is, did I make it in five minutes? But if not, I'm sorry, but hopefully you found this video very helpful. I am so excited to see all of you incorporate and implement these techniques. If you do, tag me so I can see them and I can repost them too, because I'm excited to see how you all apply these uh, tips as well. So with that said, thank you so much for joining me on yet another tips video. And if you have any other questions on some future video ideas, maybe some things you want me to break down, let me know in the comments below so I can hopefully make some videos all about that as well. And I'll see you all in the next one.